Okay, so, um, so it reads this way, verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like the precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, beard down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life evermore. You may be seated in the, in the house of God. I want to ask you all to pray with me this morning. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, and we bless your holy name because you're so, you're so gracious, Lord God. You're so kind. You give, give, has given us a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength, Lord God, and for that we thank you. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we ask your Holy Spirit to, to just lead us, Lord God, and that you will just speak through me, Lord God, and that your people, their hearts and their minds, Lord, they will receive your word in Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. I feel, I feel good this morning. Somebody asked me, why, 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 why is Pastor Brown feeling good? Why are you feeling good? Feeling good? Don't need a reason. <laughs> Why do you have to have a reason to feel good? Huh? You, when, when you wake up in the morning, you ought to be already feeling good, right? Yeah. But, but really, I'm feeling good because I, was, uh, I attended a, um, a, a family um, function yesterday. My grandmother's sister's twin daughters uh, celebrated their 80th birthday, right? 80th birthday. So, so, so we had family coming in from all over the place, and and family that you know that I had never even seen before in my life, you know, just just. But but I knew they were family, you know, just by looking at them. As a matter of fact, there, there, there were some brothers that were like tall, right? Because I'm always wondering why am I, why am I the runt? And I've got a nephew that's um, Jonathan. Jonathan Jonathan is six foot seven. Jonathan is six foot seven. My my nephew, he's six foot seven, right? Six foot seven, and 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 when he was a kid. You know, he had, he had blue eyes, right? And I saw his twin yesterday. And I was texting out to Dallas to my mother and my sister. I said, I just found Do Jonathan's twin. And now we know that uh, there ain't nothing strange going on. <laughs> because, because Jonathan's twin is right there. So I took a picture of, of, um, of my cousin and also his son. And, and both of those jokers were just tall. Wow. Tall. But, it's, but, but it was good. You know, it was good to, uh, you know, to be with them. And um, so, so they asked me to, you know, to, to do an in, you know, um, invocation and, and the prayer. And I was like, well, you know, maybe I can find, you know, some scripture that would be fitting for the occasion. And, and I went to Psalms 133. So I said, well, since I used that yesterday and I felt so good uh, by reading that yesterday, I was and self said, well, I think you just need to preach that to your people <laughs> because it is good. It is so good when, the Bible says, it is so good that, it is so good when brethren. We're not talking about the world. We're talking about how um, the people of God, how we should feel when we get together. It says that it's, that it's lovely. So every time that we get together, y'all will be smiling. You shouldn't be looking around talking about, well, you know what, I can't wait for that joker to hurry up and finish preaching because I got somewhere to go. We, we should be glad when we see everyone's faces. Like I said last week, we can't pick and choose who we want to be happy around because the Bible declares that we should be, by, by virtue of seeing your faces, it should bring some joy into my space. So, so, so how are we are to, to live together with one another in, in Christian unity? You see, it's not enough to be in the same place, sit next to each other, and put a check in the box because we're feeling good because we showed up on church on Sunday. That, that, that's not enough. And I know the Bible says where two or three are gathered, that God is in the midst but the Bible also says they have to be touching in agreeing. So you can have a hundred folk that don't agree on anything and God is not in the midst. It just simply means we're having church with a hundred folk. But no one is agreeing. 
And all that I'm trying to say this morning is, is that for God's desire for his people, we're, we're not talking about folk outside of Christianity, but we're talking about people inside because if we don't clean up our house first. Amen. See, we can't worry about how they live. And I think that too, too often from the pulpit, we preach on what they do and how they live instead of cleaning up our own mess. Right? And we got to concentrate on how are we operating in the spirit. So God's desire for us, his people, is to what? It is to be at peace with one another. Because the Bible says this. Watch what the Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 7. Watch, watch what it says. The, the, the Bible says when our ways pleases God, you, you, you don't even have an enemy. You, 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 you really don't. And even if you have an enemy, guess how your enemy is treating you? He's at peace with you. Your enemy will not even bother you when you're at peace with God. And the only reason why your enemy is getting on your last nerve is maybe, just maybe, you're not in, you're not in peace with God. Because see, when we're, in, when we're in peace with God, guess what? God, he, he, he protects us. You look at Job. Job, you, you know, Satan could not even touch Job because God had a, God had a what? A hedge around him. Why? Because, because Job had peace with God. God, right? So that's why some of y'all, y'all smile when folk talk about y'all. Put you down, right? I got, I, I got the peace that surpasses all understanding. So, so I cannot be bothered by anything. So, so, so no matter how hard we try to get along, right, all the Bible is suggesting is that our greatest attempts will fail at some point if God is not in it. If God is not in how we interact with people, at some point, peace is never going to be there. But that's what, this is why the Bible says it's, it's, good, it's, it's a good thing when people or, or God's people dwell together. See, it's a good thing, and none of us should have a feeling of not wanting to be around certain folk. I am guilty of that. I have been guilty of that. And, it, and if, and if y'all... We'll be honest, y'all have been guilty of not wanting to be around certain folk. You know, yeah. Even in church. I ain't sitting over there. You, you, you know, the usher's trying to sit you. You know, back in the day when the usher would try to sit you, and the usher's going to sit you beside somebody that you don't really give a darn about. And you're trying to tell the usher, uh, can I sit over there with my cousin? And the usher's like, No. That's not how we roll up in this church. You're going to sit where we sit you. And you're sitting up in church all for a whole hour and a half, sitting next to somebody feeling uncomfortable. And you have the audacity to go home talking about the Lord had a, we had a great time though. The Holy Spirit was operating in the church today. The devil is alive because you was uncomfortable sitting next to the person. The Bible says it is a good thing when the people of God are living together in Unity. So, so I want to talk about, you know, how we should just let it flow. Let it flow. So some people, you, you know, they come into the house of God and you're just like restricted. You got your church face on. You got your church act on. You don't act the way you act out there because out there you let it flow. And people, they get to see who you really are. But for some reason, when you come inside of the house of God, you, 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 you got to get real quiet you, you have to act real holy. You have to be real stiff because you want everybody to see you as a religious person. And God is not calling us to be religious. God is calling us to have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to help some people out. God never called anyone um, 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 to be saved by the church. Church don't save you. Jesus Christ does. But it's a good thing when we, when we come together. As a matter of fact, before service begins, you know, there should be like a commotion. I would love the fact if I could come out here one Sunday morning before service begins and say, y'all need to shut up. Y'all talking too loud. <laughs> that, that, that's how, to, but, 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 but again, but again, you know, we come into the house of God and it's a holy place. It ain't holy without the holy people. 
But we come into the sanctuary and we think that we have to be so subdued and we have to be so quiet because the Lord is in his holy place and let all the earth be silent before him. And we have all of these people and some people are really going through some things. You know, not everyone is going through something, but at least one of y'all is going through something. And people are coming inside of the house of God to what? To be lifted up by someone with the capacity to encourage someone. But it's a great thing when we get together. And it should not take a program for people to go out and say, we really had a great time in church today. Because sometimes the only time we can, we, we, you know, we can talk about how good the Lord moved in our service is when we have a program. Regular Sunday? No. We don't, we don't talk about the regular Sunday, but we talk about um, the program. But the Bible says that it is a good and it's a pleasant thing when kindred, kindred, that means, that, that means we're all on one accord. We're all, we, we all have a kindred spirit. You, 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 you ever notice that, um, that, that wherever you go, if there's a group of people, um, sooner or later you're going to gravitate to that kindred spirit? You're, you're not even going to know who they are? But because of the spirit that's on them, whether it's good or bad, you're going to just gravitate over to, to that, right? Because why? Like-minded people hang out with like-minded people. And all the Bible is saying, it is good when like-minded Christians get together. But the text says, in unity. In unity. It does not say uniformity. That's where, because see, that's where the church went wrong. It says in unity. Because, see, there is a difference in me being uniform versus unity. Because, see, unity is suggests that I want to work with you. It's, it suggests that we are working together. It, it, it suggests that we have, we, we have some teamwork going on. It suggests that there are no little eyes and big use or, or, or big eyes and little use, or however that thing's supposed to come out. It, it, it suggests that pastor ain't trying to do it all. That everybody got a part in what we do in Mount Marine Baptist Church. That's, 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 that's unity. And unity does not mean that I got to be like you. That I got to sound like you. That I got to sing like you. And if you're a preacher, that you got to preach like me. Or I got to preach like you. Why? Because God made you different and our uniqueness becomes, and when our uniqueness becomes an issue with people, watch this, then it has to be something that they need to deal with and not you altering who you are to satisfy what they want. Too many people are altering themselves to fit into the crowd. And the psalmist says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, right? Wonderful are your works in me, God. And it says, my soul knows well. So if you know who you are, see, it all depends on knowing who you are. Know thyself. And if I know who I am, then I am not changing for you. And if you know who you are, then you won't change for me. And if you know for a fact that God is the one that made you and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God, then guess what? How can someone else cause you to change? But your soul has to know that God made you and that you have your own DNA that was tailor-made just for you. You're supposed to be different. You're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be looking like everybody else. You're not supposed to be trying to have the same hairstyle as everybody else. You're not supposed to be trying to dress the same way that everybody else is dressing. You're not supposed to be trying to get your shana now on inside of the church like everybody else. Why? Because we are all different. Look at your neighbor and say, I am different. I'm different. And guess what? And I accept my uniqueness. Because my uniqueness is a gift from God. If young people could understand that one principle, that your uniqueness, it, 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 your uniqueness, it belongs to you, and stop trying to be like somebody else. Because you don't have to be like somebody else. So uniqueness. 
uniformity. Back in the day when, when, I, when the elders, when they made quilts, each person did something different on the quilt. And these sisters, they didn't try to look over at Sister Sue and Sister Barbara's like, hmm, I'm trying to do what Sister Sue, no, Sister Sue is like, no, I got my story that I'm telling on my square, and you got your story that you're telling on your square, and we got to be different, because when we hang up this quilt, guess what, it's going to be a conglomerate of all of our stories, and when we come inside of the house of God, we all got a story. And our stories are not all the, 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 you know, the same. Our stories don't all look the same. Our stories don't all feel the same. But the issue is, is we have to confront unity versus uniformity. And most folk don't know the difference. Unity versus uniformity are words which seem interchangeable, but they are not. Uniformity is a state of being united and joined as a whole, while uniformity is a state of being uniform or consistent in appearance and character. That sounds Baptist to me. Everybody wearing the same thing. Ushers wearing their white dresses, their white shoes, and their white stockings, and they can't stand folk that are coming through the doors. But they're uniform. And what they wear. They look like they got it together, but some of them are not doing what they should be doing. Now you got these modern um, greeters, they don't wear no uniform, they just wear what they wear. And people come in, they got a smile, they don't have, the, they don't look the part, but they are doing the part. Because see, unity, unity can be seen as a collective effort to achieve a common goal and is often used in the context of teamwork where people work together to achieve a common objective. Unity is characterized by collaboration, cooperation, mutual support, and respect. Unity is about bringing together different parts to create a whole. That means that everybody that's in here right now, you are special in the eyes of God. You have something that you have to offer to the economy of of God. Don't think it's all about the preacher behind the pulpit. Don't think it's all about a deacon or a trustee or someone that has a position. It just simply means that if everyone, we got to put this thing all together because we can't do anything without you. We can't. We need all of y'all to be participators in what we do in the house of God. But on the flip side, uniformity, I like to use uniformity with religion. So uniformity begin, can be seen as the absence of diversity and variation. That's religion. Because religion says this, we don't do it like that. At 11 o'clock, when I was a kid, you could go to any church, and at 11 o'clock, you, 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 you knew exactly what was going to happen in the church. Any church, Baptist church, why? Because everyone was what? Uniform. Matter of fact, people had it so bad that they had the audacity to come in somebody else's church and say, hey, listen, um, um, you know your preacher didn't do the, uh, you know, the call to worship right because uh, that ain't how we do it in the Baptist church because people are so used to being uniform instead of having unity. Now, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 says this. It says, watch this. It says, let all things be done in decency, decency and in order. But the Bible is not talking about in order. You know, in order means let all things be done in decency and in order. And somewhere someone grabbed that and says it has to be done in the right kind of way. Well, um, if I do it my way and if my way is decent, and if my way is orderly, then it's cool with God. Now, now, young Chanel, now if she does it decently and she does it in her own kind of way, guess what? It's cool with God. And if you do it in another fashion, but if, but if it's decent and if it's in order, then it's cool with God, right? It doesn't have to look like and smell like and be like what everybody else is doing, right? I get bored looking at the same thing, doing the same. I get bored because that's just how, how I am. 
And I just believe that sometimes God's like, oh, come on, please now. Come on. Can we, can we get something different up in, the, up in my house? But that's not how we do it around here. Decency and order does not mean that everything has to be done right. But look at what Paul says. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21, he says, he says, watch what he says. He says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. The eye can't say to the hand, um, you're not looking like me. You don't do what I can do. You don't have the gift, so we don't need you. Right? And what we see in the church is, is that we think that the only people that can make the church move and be successful is here in the pulpit. Not knowing that everyone has a part in the successes and also failures. Yes, sir. Now, if church fails, y'all know where that's going. Church fails because of preaching. But if the church is successful, guess what? Ain't we looking good? Amen. Church mess up. Boy, that pastor, boy, oh, oh God. But y'all can't be saying to the deacons, y'all ain't no preacher. We don't need y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all can't be saying, you know, to the, you know, to the greeters, hey, hey, greeters, we don't, you know, we don't need, or the trustees, we don't need you, or the people that just come in, you know, to worship, you know what, you don't do anything, we don't need you, you don't tithe, we don't need you, no, God, see, God can use all of you if we're, we're operating in, in unity, because every one of you are needed in order to make what we do successful in God is depending on everybody. Listen, when Jesus, when Jesus was searching out, scoping out his disciples, what was he looking for? Jesus did not go to the synagogues looking for the, re the religious Pharisees and Sadducees, those wearing the robes. He wasn't looking for uniformity. He was looking for people that would follow him in unity. And he went, he was like, well, you know, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to find me a couple fishermen. I'm going to find a tax collector. I'm going to find a Judas. I'm going to find some different people. Because he says, I, because he says, because, because I want to put this thing together because I want people to see what my church is going to look like. And the church of Jesus Christ does not look like what people think it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like a rainbow. It's supposed to look different. It's supposed to look polka dotted. It's supposed to have variations. It's supposed to be different. It's, a, it's not supposed to be the same. So how good and present it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. The optimal word today is in unity. But then he begins to explain about how the church or how the getting of together, it looks. And this is how it looks. When, when, when we let it flow, and I'm talking about letting it flow. When we let it flow, guess what happens? It flows. You ever, you ever, I was going to use a, use a, I can't use that as an analysis. I cannot use that. Things get stopped up sometimes. Right? And you got to, and you want things to move. But it can't move because it's, there's no flow. So when people get together in unity, get together in unity, right, right, guess what happens? The worship experience, it flows. And whenever there's not a worship experience or the move of God is not operating in the confounds of the church, that means that there is a spirit in the church that's keeping the anointing from flowing. But when we get together in unity and everyone is doing their part, the text says it's like a precious oil that's on the head of Aaron. Which means that sometimes it ain't flowing because of leadership. I was talking to a brother uh, this week and I says, uh, and, and we were talking about uh, technology in the church, and I said, I said, don't be fooled into thinking that the people don't want it to move forward. Uh -huh. I said, sometimes it ain't the folk in the pews. 
Sometimes it's them pastors that don't want to do the work. That just want to show up and preach a 15 minute sermon, grab their check and go home. And if the oil is going to flow from the head down to the robe, that means that, 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 that i got to operate in the gift so that it can get to the people. And some people don't even want y'all to get what God has best for you. You ever notice that sometimes, you know, people, they, they, they just want everything just for themselves. Unity doesn't do that. Unity ensures that everyone gets what's coming to them. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard and, and on the beard of Aaron running down to the collar of his robe. That means that nothing missing, nothing broken. That means that, that, that there is an overflow when I let go. But if I'm holding on to that which God has given me, my gifts and my talents, my resources, and it's all about me and what I can have for myself, guess what? It does not get to the people. And religion says this. It's all about what you do in the church for the church and not for the people. And Jesus is saying, you know, you know, you got to take care of the people. You know, um, Old Testament says, what has God required of you, old man? Right? It is not in the gifts and the talents. It is not in the tithes. It is having mercy on the people. So, folk, when, when folk are allowed to be themselves, it's called they are received and not hindered. In other words, we're losing a whole lot of young folk in the church, right? Because we want to put on them what we couldn't even do ourselves when we were young. And we are losing them because we're not embracing who they are in 2024. And we keep looking back when we were a 12, a 6, and an 8-year-old kid thinking that they have to be the same way. And it's stopping them from flowing and operating in the church. In other words, our Sunday worship experience should flow, our praise should flow, our fellowship should flow. And when it's not flowing, it's because there is something or someone that's blocking what we do. And sometimes, watch this, like I said earlier, it begins at the head. And the second thing is this about the flow of God is that, is that when we let it flow, guess what, y'all? You can't stop it. You, you can't... You, let me, let me, I can only speak for myself, okay, myself. I, I ain't talking for Malon, I'm not talking for the deacons, I'm not talking for anyone up in here, but I'm talking about for me. When it comes to me, I am like hard-headed. Y'all probably like, really, Pastor Brown? We, we knew that. <laughs> I'm bullheaded sometimes. Really, Pastor Brown? Yes. But only on the things that I am passionate about. If I'm passionate about it, oh man, I'll roll up my sleeves and I'll do it, right? But we should not allow the things outside of us to keep us from flowing. Matter of fact, you should never allow anyone to block the blessings that God has for you. Watch this. You should not even be hiding your stuff. Because Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, somebody help me out. You are the light of the world. A city that sits on a hill cannot be hidden. Why do we keep hiding our stuff from people? Who, who cares about what, what folk say about you? Yes, you don't have to sound like a preacher. Stop trying to sound like a preacher when you get up and talk to Christians. Right? Just talk. Just talk. You are the light of the hill. But watch this. When we allow our gifts and talents to, to flow, just let it flow, it flows, but also it falls. It, it falls because the writer says, the writer says when people, when the people of God get together, it, it, it also does this. He compared it to like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountaintops of Zion. When you wake up in the morning and there's dew on the ground, when did it happen? 
How did it happen? And what did you do to make it happen? When you wake up in the morning and there's dew on the ground, what time did it happen? How did it happen? And what did you do to make it happen? And all the writer is saying is this. When the people of God get together, there's some things that God does in the spirit. And we don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know how it's going to happen. And we're not going to have anything to do with it when it does happen. Because it says it's like the do. Unity causes God to do something in the earth for us. And we keep praying to God, God, when are you going to come down and, and, and bless me like you bless your neighbor? And God is like, well, when are you going to start acting like, like you're unified with people? When are we going to stop being, being a, a, you know, we're not a split church. I'm not talking about Mount Marine. I'm talking about the other churches. When can we just get together? When can, when can we just get together and just let what we do flow? No, I'm not changing for you. That's the attitude that you need to have when you come inside of the house of God. That's the attitude that you need to have when you go on your job. That's the attitude that you should have when you go to your community. I am not changing who I am because of you. And if you cannot accept who I am, guess what? That is not my problem. That is your problem. Church or, or young people, take that to the bank. Stop changing yourself for people because guess what? They ain't going to like you anyhow. You can change yourself for someone, and guess what? And they say, well, oops, I wasn't telling you to change that way. I need you to change another way. And there you go. You got another haircut, and you're trying to change. No, no, be your authentic self. Because remember, God made you special, and he gave you his own DNA. But it's like the Dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. And watch this. This is going to bless you. And I, and I promise you, I'm going to sit down after this one, because it says, for there. The Lord commanded his blessing. Now, where is the there? Everyone wants the Lord's blessing, but a lot of folk don't want to go where the Lord says you have to go to get it. Now, I'm going to help you out real quick. The there is not a place. The there is an attitude. The there is unif unification. When the people of God, because God commanded his people, that if you know how to operate in unity, he says, that's why I'm going to bless you. Okay. I'm not going to bless a divided church. I don't care how many programs you have. You're just going to be broke. You're just going to be out there begging folk to give you money. You know, you're just going to be broke. But when the church gets together, Unified, there is where the God, God says, I'm going to bless you. And it's not because of one individual tithing to the church. And let's get off the money piece. It is the, it's whatever kind of blessing we need as a body of Christ. God says, when you get it together. When you learn how to be unified, when you can love on everyone, he says, oh, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your socks off. I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly, about anything that you can even imagine or think. You don't even have to run around the church seven times. You just got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You just got to love God as you love his people. You got to be unified because there the Bible says God commanded his blessing. God, God is always seeking opportunities to, to, to bless us, but sometimes, sometimes folk don't want unification. Matter of fact, some people will keep you from doing ministry because they don't want you around. And I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I know. And it's not a good thing when you keep people from not doing that which God has called them to do because you're uncomfortable with them. And you cannot get blessed when you are doing things to keep people divided. 
And if there's anything that I can tell the people out there in Facebook and YouTube, if you're using something or if, if you're using a person or something that happened as to why you don't want to come back inside of any church, watch this. The Bible says you got to get over it. You got to learn how to be unified with people and start with self. It's uncomfortable sometimes. Yes, there are folk that I just don't like going around. But I have to do the uncomfortable thing because when you start doing the uncomfortable thing, what happens? You become comfortable. You become comfortable. It's so easy to be around people that I'm comfortable with. That, 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 that's easy. But to be around folk, it's like, oh, man. Uh, you know, because uh, I'm not the smartest cookie in a jar, right? Because I'm always um, like, man, dumb, dumb people are like smart. They're rocket scientists. I'm going to go have to go to them and ask them what do they need and, and I can't even speak their language and I got to go and get uncomfortable I'm uncomfortable I'm uncomfortable but I get up there and I smile Amen. this is how I do it at work I go to a person's desk first of all I'll, I'll send an email and if the email if I don't get a reply to the email that like a, a minute or two especially if it's something urgent because when I get something urgent, it means that somebody else wants it urgent, and that means that maybe somebody else needs it, and, and I'm like, well, I sent you the email. And then I just go to their desk, and I say, hey, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, sir? Everybody, sir, to me. You can be 21 years old in the building, they'll sir to me. Hey, sir, how you doing today? And I'm smiling. Uh, so how was your weekend? Oh, by the way, I sent you a, um, an email. You get it? It's right there. Can you open it up for me? Can you, can you open it up? And as I am talking with him, I am building a relationship. Building a relationship. Sometimes people are like, hey, Brown, how is it that you know so many people in the, in the building? Everybody know you, Brown, because I talk to the folk, because I'm talking to them because at some point I'm going to have to, y'all ready, use them. And that's all that God wants. God wants you to start unifying with people because at some point, God's going to want to use you. And God can't use us if we are divided. Because united, we stand, but if we're divided, we fall. And this is the problem with our nation. Our nation is, is falling because we're looking at who's who and who's what? Democrat, Republican, instead of looking at, let's try to get some things unified. I don't give a darn about whether or not you are Democrat. Really don't even give a darn whether or not you are Republican. Because if you, don't, because if you cannot um, unify with your brothers and sisters, then really it doesn't matter. Because God doesn't look at what house you come from. God doesn't look at your skin color. God is looking at, can you roll with me? Can you sit down with me? God's like, no, we don't want to be divided. This thing, is the thing called life is all about unity. Somebody shout unity. So Father, we thank you, Lord God. And we bless your holy name for being so gracious and kind to us on this day. For this is the day, Lord God, that you have made. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Just go on and let it flow. Let